apparently we have a new prime minister in the UK. Liz Truss. If you haven't heard of her, don't worry, because neither have I. <laughs> I know she, she used to be the foreign minister, but, you know, she's unelected. Like, keep in mind, no one elected this woman, right? She's just another Tory. She's just another Conservative Party member that's given the premiership, right? Which is, which is scandalous. Like, uh, I think the UK has had four prime ministers in the last six years. And um, she, you know, Liz Truss, again, unelected, just like Boris Johnson was unelected. You have about 0.1% of the British public that actually elected this woman. And when I say that, I'm talking about a very finite amount. These are Conservative Party members. And they basically have a battle inside the party who's going to be the leader. But it's not, it's not a general election, right? Excuse me, I did Boris Johnson. I remember he, he was running against... Um, uh, I even covered it. We had December, general election, December 12th. Um, and they tried to have it uh, uh, at a time when, um, you know, this is... This is during the term holidays, right? So that's not true about Boris Johnson. I just want to say that the fact you have so many people that jump from health secretary to far foreign minister, you know, and they used to be the mayor of London and now they're the prime minister. It's, it's astounding. It's like they're giving their friends jobs. You know what I mean? Here she is. She's with the queen. There's a, there's a ceremony in the UK, right? You, you're not just, you don't just become the prime minister. Basically, you, you have to formally go to the queen and then the queen um, is basically asking the winner of this leadership contest to form a new administration, right? There's a, there's a quote right there. The, the UK is, is, um, is still a kingdom, but it's a constitutional monarchy, so we, the queen doesn't have too much power, so they say. Um, I don't know why, why she's still there, though. But here's Boris Johnson's goodbye. Okay, this is what he said. I find it quite funny. On the subject of bouncing around in future careers, let me say that I am now like one of those booster rockets that has fulfilled its function, and I will now be gently re-entering the atmosphere and splashing down invisibly in some remote and obscure corner of the Pacific. And like Cincinnatus, I am returning to my plough. And I will be offering this government nothing but the most fervent support. They, he, was, he was responding to a question where they asked him what, he has his, you know, what kind of job he has planned for the future. I can already tell you, he's going to be a lobbyist. Okay, that's, that's what you do when you leave politics. And um, uh, I, let, let me show you who Liz Truss is right now, now that she's the prime minister. She was asked a few weeks ago whether she considers Emmanuel Macron, who's the French president, a friend. And this is what she said. Um, but President Macron, friend or foe? The, the jury's out. But if I, if I, if I, if I, if I become, if I become prime minister, I'll judge him on deeds, not words. You might be thinking that that's not a big deal. It is a big deal. They had this whole spat. Then you know you're Macron responding, and then Boris Johnson had to go and cover for her because she's an idiot. Here's, here's another clip of Liz Truss. Can it get into a debate about economic that, theory. This, this is one it, of the things that you've promised clearly. You want to do it. Absolutely. You believe it's the right thing. I do is believe it, it's right. But is it fair that on this yes, decision... Yes, it is fair. It is fair yes, to give the wealthiest fair. people more money back. It is fair. Her idea of, of tax cuts is to, make <laughs> is to make the richest people in the UK richer. Now, this is my favorite. I saved the best clip for last because basically she was asked, what would you do if you have to nuke the whole planet, right? The button is in front of you, uh, so to speak. And, and here's what she said. You'll be ushered into a room very privately at number 10. We'll be laid out in front of you what are called the letters of last resort. Your orders to our Trident boat captain on whether you, Prime Minister... Trident is the, is the class of uh, nuclear submarines that the UK has. This trust is giving the order to unleash our nuclear weapons. It would mean global annihilation. I won't ask you, would you press the button? You will say yes. But faced with that task, I would feel physically sick. How does that thought make you feel? I think it's an important duty of the Prime Minister. I'm ready to do that. How it would make you feel. I'm, I'm ready to do it. Thank God. Did, did you hear her, guys? She's ready to do it. The, the, the random broom that someone pulled out of a cupboard is ready to do it.
She does look like a broom, doesn't she? She looks like a broom from the back. I'm sorry, Mom. I had to say it. I had to say it. Someone had to say it. Someone had to say it, and it, it just had to be me. She looks like a broom that someone pulled out of a closet. And she's ready to nuke us all, so that's good, right? Basically, what you need to know about her is that she, she, she wants to be like Margaret Thatcher, right? <laughs> so she, she used to be a liberal Democrat when she was younger. Then, of course, she, uh, she became um, a conservative, a Tory. And uh, now she, wants, she, she, she loves Margaret Thatcher. And I saw this headline from just a few hours ago. This is from CNN. And I, I, I couldn't help but laugh because <laughs> it says the British pound has not been this week since Margaret Thatcher was prime minister. Well, well, Liz, you've got your wish. You got your wish. You're now Margaret Thatcher and you have also inherited a really crappy pound. I think it's a bit mean to say inherited, like as if she had no part in it. <laughs> very much, very much a lot to do with it. Anyway, um, as a result, Priti Patel is gone. So again, for those of you who don't remember... Uh, this is Pretty Patel. She basically was the, the Home Secretary, right? So she heads the Home Office in the, in the United Kingdom. And she has many responsibilities, right, as, as Home Secretary. And she resigned because, well, basically, I don't think she wanted to, but, but Liz Truss didn't ask her to stay, right? So, you know, to avoid the, the embarrassing situation of having to be fired, she just resigned. And uh, that's what ministers usually do when there's a new cabinet being formed and they're not asked to stay on. Now, Priti Patel, I think, is, is, is much more remarkable than Liz Truss in terms of what she's actually done. And I, when I say done, I mean really bad things. Um, I listed a few of her accomplishments on Twitter. So one thing is criminalizing asylum seekers, right? So, you know, the United Kingdom is uh, uh, one of the countries that signed the UN Refugee Convention. This is a long time ago in the 50s. You know, Priti Patel... Remember, she's not only Home Secretary, she's also representing Whitam, right? So, so she can still submit legislation and get it passed. Um, so she, she uh, is the one who, sub who proposed the uh, Nationality and Borders Bill, right? So there are several things that this bill does. Number one, as I said, it criminalizes asylum seekers, which I'm not going to get into that because I've done so many videos about how absurd this is. It's wrong. And then on top of that, in, in that Nationality and Borders Bill, she gives herself, because she's the Home Secretary, she says that, that she has the right to take someone's citizenship, and she doesn't have to tell them anymore, okay? So if, if it's too hard to reach you, right? I, I find this funny, because if the United Kingdom, if the Home Secretary is about to take your citizenship, I'm pretty fucking sure they know where you are, because you've done something very bad. But anyway, she gave herself... Right? Permission to take away someone's citizenship without even telling them. Uh, criminalizing protesters. That's another good one. Right? So this is the, the kill the bill protests. Right? So you, that was kill the bill. That was the protest chant about this bill which criminalizes uh, protesters. So basically it's, it's right there what it says on the tin. <laughs> right? Um, this is just one example that... that Claudia pulled up randomly. Uh, you can basically, with this law, not only give police the right to shut down protests on the spot, but basically, if, even if it's one person protesting, they can still shut it down. Yeah? And it criminalizes, you know, anyone who's a nuisance, whatever that means. Here's some of her other contributions. She gave undercover agents permission to kill, rape, torture people. So that is, of course, the spy cops bill. It's, it's what it says. You know, it's not, it's not officially called Spy Cops, right? Um, I've done so many articles and videos on, the, on this um, uh, horrendous bill, but it's nicknamed the Spy Cops bill because it's basically you're giving cops, you know, the, the, a license to kill, to act like spies, to do anything they want. And it's not just police. When we say undercover agents, that doesn't necessarily mean police. It can mean someone from the gambling administration or whatever. <laughs> I, I, forgot the, I forgot all the administrations because we, list, we listed them and they were too long. But yeah, that's, that's, that's actually what it says. There was actually an amendment, to like a specific amendment to say that, no, just because you're an undercover agent, that doesn't mean that you can rape people and kill them and do all these like re, you know really sick crimes. And that, and that was repealed, right? Apparently, <laughs> I don't know what to say. But that, that was her idea. That was her idea, right? She, she uh, submitted that, and then I told you already about this. And Assange, we knew that she was going to do that. In the UK, 
the final, final, final decision to extradite someone to another country is is the Home Secretary's, right? So even even if, um, you know, they can come up with with whatever reasoning they want because after Gary McKinnon, uh, they blocked his um, extradition. They made amendments to the uh, uh, basically to the permissions and privileges that the Home Secretary has. So they basically said, okay, well, you you. Theresa May, you're, you're, you're able to block Gary McKinnon, but the future Home Secretaries, they will not be able to do that on human rights grounds. You know, despite that being true, she could have still blocked uh, Julian Assange's extradition. Of course, she won't do that. Again, I've covered this a million times, but nevertheless, at the end of the day, she is the one, Pretty Patel, she's the one that put her signature on that paper, and she okayed the extradition of Julian Assange to the United States, where, you know, he's facing two centuries in prison for being a journalist. So you could also add to this list criminalizing journalism, right? I, th- I think that's a fair, a fair characterization. So she's gone. She's gone. What a shame. I bet you she'll be back. Because Priti Patel has resigned before, right? There was a scandal where she was having secret meetings with the Israelis, and she didn't disclose this, right? And then when that, you know, this was revealed, she had to resign. And then she came back even stronger as, as the Home Secretary. And so now she's resigning from, from her... her um, position as home secretary i have a feeling she'll be back i have a very very bad feeling in my stomach that she'll be back so that's my gut feeling here she is when when um she was telling members of parliament to shut up because she was basically giving a tribute to boris johnson's government which is now defunct and and and, uh, and null and void and she was heckled and, and this was her the other day Speaker, before i answer today's questions and um start questions if i may i'd briefly like to remark on the last three years of boris johnson's prime ministership under which i've served as home secretary this morning a written ministerial st- statement was tabled in my name, outlining the work of the Home Office. Um, I'm proud to serve in this government, and I'd like to thank the Prime Minister, Home Office ministers, past and present, and a wide range of officials. Goodbye. (laughs) Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Good riddance. Good riddance. Well, there you have it. We have uh, a new prime minister that no one has ever heard of and no one elected. Um, nothing new there. You know, that, that I'm losing count. Uh, Gordon Brown. Yeah, Gordon Brown is another one that comes to mind. So Tony Blair was prime minister. And then I think he handed it over to Gordon Brown, basically. Another unelected prime minister. But that's in 2007, wasn't it? Anyway, uh, this is the, st- the current state of affairs. And, uh, you know, I hinted that the pound is doing very badly, which I'll get to more in detail in a second. But that's what she, she um, has to deal with right now, okay? So energy uh, costs are through the roof. But once again, I'll do a separate video. I'm going to talk about that just now uh, in a moment. And um, everyone is looking to see her new plan, to see Liz Truss' plan tomorrow. She said she's supposedly going to do something. I mean, I don't... Uh, with these people, really. It's corruption. It's corruption. That's that's how I see it. Um, and, you know, if another country was doing this sort of thing, like, oh, yeah, you know, you're the mayor of London. Tomorrow you can be the, the prime, um, sorry, the foreign minister. And then the other day you can head the treasury. And then maybe in another cabinet, you know, you could be the health minister. And then in another cabinet, OK, you can finally be prime minister. And then you just hand these, they hand these jobs out to each other. You know, no one elected them. And uh, if this was happening in another country, you would call it a banana republic.